Have you seen Justin's hit? Dude, he's roping the ball. <laughs> he's roping the ball. He's looking at the cap. Yeah, here we go. Two, one. Boom, we're back. Junior, this is this is the week, my friend. Yeah. Auburn. SEC play, baby. We're here. SEC we are play. Here. People always say uh, life's a little different when it comes to just both teams being in the SEC. It's just like the the amount of uh, hype that it, it's brought up. Um, you could hear it in all the videos. I'm sure you can start to sense it around campus. What do you think it truly means, like, and it, coming from your your eyes? Man, there's just – it's history. I think that's kind of the biggest thing is there's so much history between – I mean, not just between us and Auburn, but just kind of all the SEC schools. And, uh, you know, there's you talk about these games that happened 10 years ago because they're just so monumental in like kind of how things shake out in the SEC, how things kind of play out to get us to this point right now. So, um, no, dude, there's just a lot of history and uh, it means it just means more. It just means more. Yeah, I I think. uh <clears throat> you guys traveling uh, as much as you have early on in the season and Auburn being able to stay at home, I think adds a whole nother element to it where it's like they, this isn't their first home game. If I'm not mistaken, no. this is their homecoming, correct? Uh, I have not heard of that, but I mean, I think it is. They, they sell out almost every game there. It's, it's loud. Uh, we know what we are getting ourselves into. It, it's just always a great environment there. Always a great environment. I'm looking forward to the little white, uh, long shirt, long collared shirt guys with the orange ties. And then I <laughs> forgot what the girls wear. I don't think anything can top the Oklahoma State <laughs> girls now and the dresses. Uh, that's SEC. Well, no, no, that's Big Ten football. That's Big Ten. No, yeah, Big Ten. As, I think it exists in the SEC too. I, that's, no, that's Big uh, Twelve. That's Big Twelve. Big Twelve. They're Big, Big Twelve. 12. They're Big 12. Twelve. Yeah, look at us. Look at us knowing <laughs> knowing ball here. Um, so, Junior, we always do these shows by recapping the previous week, uh, previewing this upcoming week, and then just talking about a little bit what's going on in the news. We're going to do those same things today, except go a little bit faster since it is Thursday. Um, you, you've had a full week of preparation. Damn near today is. I, what is explain to me like what uh, a Thursday practice is for you guys? Are you guys yes yeah, so Thursday pr pretty hard? No, we're, yeah, we're still going. We're still getting after. We're still hitting. Uh, I like Thursdays because we get to take off our knee braces, which is big time. We get to go inside, which is huge, and uh, we take off the little guardian caps. So you really kind of get that first feel of like, all right, you know, this is the clink, the clinging that we're going to be getting on Saturday. And uh, so it's really fast paced practice. And then it's just kind of just sharpening all the tools. You're going over the first eight. You're kind of going over kind of all the scenarios, third and longs, kind of all that good jazz and kind of that red zone stuff and just kind of sharpening up your tools. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I'm I'm glad. So we've we've gotten a full week of preparation. We're gonna get into them in a second, but we got to talk about UAB a little bit. You guys uh, got punched in the mouth early. I yeah. I don't think I've really gotten a chance to talk to you ever since this game happened. We've kind of just texted since I was uh, I wasn't there this past week. Yeah. Um. But just my initial thoughts is one. Uh, if you're going to get punched in the mouth at any point in time in the game, let it be within the first 10 minutes of the game. <laughs> yeah. You know, like let, yeah. let the mistakes and, and shit happen early because then it gives you ample amount of time to bounce back. And Definitely. I think it had that happened at any point in time in the game, I think you guys bounce back respectfully um, because you guys could do whatever you want. Uh, you guys are running the ball extremely well. Just talk about that. Like, how good does it feel to be a part of a team that's running the ball well? Man, dude, it's it's so much fun. And it's just nice to know, like, it, you know, it's coming from your unit. It's all five. And then it's, you know, JJ making us look amazing. It's Rodney making us look like we're dogs. And Braylon making us look like we're, you know, these 
these guys. And I mean, we're, we're opening up holes, but I mean, it's all credit to them and the way that they practice and the way that they kind of go about their work. And uh, it's showing on Saturdays, the way that they're hitting the holes, the way that they're breaking off these 10, 20 yard runs. And uh, it feels so good, dude. You know, you're just, we're working our tails off in practice and to kind of see it all come together. And, you know, even kind of going into the season, I felt like we weren't fully there as like an offense line in the run game. And it's just each and every week we're kind of just taking the next step, that next step, that next step. And I think that just comes from our practice habits. And uh, it's cool. Really cool to see. Really cool to see. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what happens when you guys uh, practice extremely hard. The games become a little easy. The thing mm -hmm. that you credited your running backs for that. I mean, it, it's it, it's also credit to the running backs coach, but their aiming points are just so perfect. They are yeah. gaining momentum as they're hitting the, the holes on the backside, which when you watch football a lot, oftentimes for a running back to change his like aiming point, there's like a hitch in the step, but it just right. seems like sometimes JJ Seamless. is getting this at like 10 miles an hour through the, it's yeah. like the, there ain't no way, like as a linebacker, even if you're filling the gap, it's, oh, that's going to be a hit. Yeah, no, that's going to be a hit. There was a play in the UAB game. It was like a third and one and JJ came off like the left side and like, right out, you could see like the first clip of it and it's like all meshed up. And JJ just doesn't care. And he just hits right through it. And then he meets like the linebacker and the linebacker's like, holy shit. And he bounces off the linebacker. And so I think, I mean, JJ's specialized in, but I think the running backs coach does a tremendous job and practice. He actually runs behind the running backs. So you'll see him and like, he'll be like, kind of like acting like he's the running back behind the running backs. They hand it off and he'll be running like, like a good five yards behind the running back, making sure like they're seeing and like he's able to see what they see. And uh, he's drenched. He's drenched after practice. So I think <laughs> I think that kind of that all correlates together and the way that they're able to hit the holes really hard. Yeah, that's that's interesting that that's the coaching method for that, because, I mean, it's that's a, it's a very tough position to coach. It, it moves it very fast. It, oddly enough, whenever you see running backs coach like these people, oftentimes were the fastest people 35 years ago, and now they're just they're bigger, you know, like yeah, they, they yeah. let themselves go. So, you know, I always found it interesting. I'm like, you know, they're coaching from back there. But if this guy's moving around, he's definitely not bigger. He's no, no, no. He's very nimble he's, and he's, he's pretty quick. He's pretty quick. Where's the cleats on the field? How many coaches years wear cleats on the field? I don't think he wears cleats. That's the crazy part, too. Damn. Yeah, yeah, he's dangerous with it. He is very dangerous with it. He just goes. That's that's funny. Uh, yeah. So okay, you guys, UAB down ten zero. Uh, what is what is like the, I guess feeling in the stadium? Did you feel like that? Because I I'll, I'll say this before you give your answer because I think it can kind of lead into it. I feel like Arkansas was has been in a bad relationship for a long time. You know, yeah. like it just seems like it's this it's the same old Razorbacks. Right. What did you feel that coming off the fans? Definitely. You could definitely sense like the oh shit, like here we go again. Like we're back to our same old ways. And I just honestly it was just it was a series of unfortunate events. And you know, like Sometimes you can't even control that. But the thing that you can control is getting the dub. And so, no, you, I definitely felt that in the, the stadium. And rightfully so, man. I mean, we started off very slow. Um, you know, that kind of wasn't our game plan going in. Our game plan was to kind of get the ball first, to score right away. And uh, so our, our game plan was derailed at the beginning. And But I think the biggest thing to take away from it is, uh, is the way that we were able to fight back. And, like, there was no – no like hesitation it was kind of just a good poise by everybody in the group to just kind of hit it head on yeah and i think that's what you got to do to to rewrite the stigmas i mean i bought into being a lions fan three years ago and you but it, it takes time right the yeah. lions three years ago were doing exactly what you guys were doing right now you get punched in the mouth, and then for the first time in forever, you guys are actually winning the ball game at the end of the day. You know, you didn't lay down. Yeah. You kept fighting, and you're showing the the fan base that, you know, anything is possible when you have that type of unity. Um, 
so you guys start putting it on them. Did it start to feel like those other games, like Oklahoma State and UAPB, when you guys were really clicking? Like you were like, oh shit! All right, the ball's rolling. Uh, man, it was it was a weird feeling because you know those first two games, the ball was rolling instantly, and like those first few drives, we were you know we were moving, and I mean. After that first drive, yeah, we started moving, but it just felt something felt just kind of off, and um, you know whatever that may be, I think it was just kind of a lack of focus, kind of during that week of practice and into the game plan, and so. Uh, but it does not feel that that way this week, man. Let me tell you, the way that we're dialed into this game plan that we have for Auburn, and just kind of the way that we're just so locked into the details right now. I think, you know, we're going to kind of, you're going to see that UAPB, that Oklahoma State offense back again. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, You guys uh, are going to Auburn tomorrow morning. Are you guys flying or is this another bus ride? No. No, no. Thank (laughs) God it's not a bus bus ride, dude. (laughs) Jesus. Yeah, no, we're we're flying. Uh, I'm excited, bro. Flying is always fun because you get a good little nap in. Uh, Mm Yeah. We're going to see what it's about. I guess we're flying Sun Country. So I have never heard of Sun Country. (coughs) Yeah. Sun Country. uh, It's going to be like an hour long flight probably for you guys. And then you're in there. Um, You guys play at 3.13 p.m., I believe, right? Because we're in the East Coast uh, time zone. I think 2.30. I think 2.30. I want to say. I think it's 2.30 Central. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's 3.30. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central for all you Razorback fans that are listening in the Central time zone right now. Um, I'm I'm fired up because I think it was a 3 p.m. kickoff when you played um, uh, at San Jose. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So it goes, so. It, it, it leads, it's that late afternoon into the evening. and Yep, it starts getting a little um, bit darker. I, I don't game. know this about Auburn. Do they still do the toilet paper if they lose? It's only if they I, win, right? I'm not sure. I thought it was when they win. But uh, I don't think you'll be seeing any toilet paper Saturday. That's that's the plan. I think we're going we're gonna to go in there and uh, we're going to make a statement. We're going to make a, a statement right away. Um. No, Auburn fans throw toilet paper at trees after Auburn wins, not losses. Um, so I'm sure it's like probably like a meme thing to do. I'll definitely be throwing <laughs> toilet paper on there. I'll be in my Arkansas gear. I'll, maybe I could find oh, some yeah. Arkansas. I, I'm going to try to find some Arkansas toilet paper, see if I can like Amazon it. You might, uh, you might start some beef, dude. They might, they're not going to like that at all. They're not gonna like that at all. Oh well, hey, you gotta do what you, you gotta know? do. You gotta do what you gotta do. When I'm in the uh, in the opponent's territory, um, I'm I'm gonna take advantage of of your guys' old traditions. Okay, and it's a <laughs> stupid tradition, by the way. Throwing toilet paper at a fucking tree. What are we twelve? <laughs> and you it's guys, very- it, it, it's childish. Grow up. Grow up. Childish. For real. <laughs> Be better, Auburn. Uh, <laughs> Auburn and Arkansas have a storied history, Junior. Um, I had pulled up some interesting uh, all-time series stats here. Auburn currently leads the series 20-12-1. to 12 and one. Ties happened back in the day. I don't even know how in college football, but it happened. Uh, so the most recent victory from Arkansas came uh, in 2022 where they snapped a six-game uh, losing streak to Auburn. Um, they had not beat them since 2015. They beat them 41 to 27 in 2022. And then last year, junior, uh, yeah, it was, it was a statement win from Auburn 48 to 10. Um, there was never a chance for the Razorbacks. You said in one of your, uh, press conferences this week that, uh, you, you can kind of feel, uh, the pain off of your teammates uh, any specific stories about that game that you've heard this week or what well, nah. explain to me how you feel it? You know, it's just those older guys that have been there. They're uh, you could just, you could just sense that. Like I want that get back, you know, they uh, getting embarrassed 
at home, it, it's never a good feeling. And like, you know, I've had that feeling at San Jose where you come in and you get blown out and you go into that next game that next year and you're just like, screw these guys, dude. Because, you know, when you're up big, those guys are talking shit and they're doing, they're feeling themselves. And so I think just kind of the the attention to detail, the focus that all these older guys that were there last year have brought into the locker room this week. You know, you could just kind of sense that, like, screw these guys. You know, we're going to get it back. And so I think that's kind of what I'm feeling. Nobody's really told stories just because, you know, you don't really want to bring it up. But it's more of just like, uh, let's get our get back. Let's create our own stories, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, and I, it, it definitely seems like you guys are are punched into the attention to detail. Uh, another stat I wanted to bring up to you guys here because it's a stat that means a lot in this game, and it's a it's the important down of third down. So coming into this game, Arkansas currently is uh, at a thirty three percent success rate on third downs on defense, meaning they're they're stopping. Uh, teams a good deal of the time arkansas is coming in at the college football best 67 and a half uh conversion rate on third downs um obviously attention to detail matters a lot on third downs Mm -hmm. but junior um this is back-to-back weeks where we are highlighting your offense uh as a top five offense in in the nation yeah, you know, that's that was what was kind of said the first day in the meeting with Bobby Petrino was we're going to be one of the best offenses in the country. And it was more of so we are going to be the best offense in the country. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to hold up to his standard because he's done this before. You know, he knows the formula and it's kind of up to the players to kind of live up to that standard and then just get the job done. And like you said, you know, third down conversions, that's what's keeping us on the field. That's what's making us score. And uh, I think just kind of our attention to detail when we go into these third down periods during the middle of the week is kind of at an all time high. And we're executing because we're practicing so hard and we're focusing so hard onto those details. And it also comes down to the game plan. You know, Petrino has these masterful thoughts, you know, and. He just he just always seems to have the right play on third down. It feels like, you know, whenever it's third and long or third and five, it's never like a shit. How are we going to get this? Because I felt that before. I felt that at San Jose where you're just like, I don't know how we're going to get this first down. It's probably not going to happen, <laughs> but let's just go out there and see what happens. But no, it's it's definitely a different vibe here where you go out there and you're like, we're going to get this job done. Yeah, I I would imagine. Uh, I remember those same third downs, by the way. Uh, yeah, third yeah. and twenty, and you <laughs> you guys would run like a draw or like oh a screen, and it would just be cooked. Oh It'd my be cooked. god, we had no chance. Oh, but yeah, some offense coordinators just got the sauce, and it it's just it's crazy when you can see the correlations like that, and it it makes legitimate sense. Uh, I think a lot of people. They they put a lot of weight into the players, but God damn it, they got to be told where to go. And yeah, you guys got a good one. You guys got a good one. And uh, I think, is there anything else that you wanted to to recap? Or what, what happened the last time you were at Auburn that you were looking forward to? Are the locker rooms good? Or the, is there the Double Tree nah, Hotel going to give you cookies? Or <laughs> No, nah, dude, the locker room is the smallest locker room in college football feels like. You're literally just crammed in there. It, it looks like a high school locker room. But, I mean, honestly, I don't know why more colleges don't do it because it's such a just a mind fuck. Like, it's so annoying when you walk into a locker room and you're just like, I'm going to have to get naked two inches away from my right guard and then my <laughs> left guard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. like, it's like, ah, oh, dude, this is not going to be fun. So not looking forward to that, but I am looking forward to the noise, dude. That's always fun to me. Like, I love, I love, you know, just having those moments where you're just like, stadium what pulse. did you say? Well, yeah, no, stadium pulse at an all-time high. Like, that's, mm-hmm. that's always, <laughs> it's, you can't hear crap in there. So uh, that's always fun to me. I love that. And so I'm excited for that. 
Yeah, it is dope. It is dope. When you said like, what did you say? It reminded me of like being at EDC day two. You're <laughs> like looking for your group. You're right at the front of the stage. Boom, 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 boom. Check, check, check. <laughs> can, 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 can. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, Junior, we have uh, a couple other topics that we want to talk about, but we will talk to you guys about them on the other side. We're going to take a quick little break. <laughs> Boom. We're back, Junior. Uh, it's... It's only fitting that we end this podcast off talking about like a, a little bro situation that <laughs> happened in the college football scene and in the NFL scene all in one weekend. This was yeah. a, a wild, uh, a wild scene. We guess I guess we'll start with college football. Shadur Sanders, uh, they beat Colorado State, and he doesn't want to shake the hands of the Colorado State quarterback. Uh, what was your Im impression of this? Uh, you know what You're talking shit on Instagram. Well, you're talking on Instagram. All right, keep you're talking. You're handling our business. Keep you talking. can't fuck You know, I'm I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it. But I'm more of, or I'm not a fan of the Colorado State quarterback equally as much. Sanders. Yeah, yeah, equally as much. Because, I mean, he just thinks he's this hot shit. And, you know, he tried to he tried to pull out the villain card. He tried to pull out the villain card before the game. And it's just like, dude, stick to your role. Let Colorado be the villains, all right? Mm -hmm. Let them talk their shit. And then you beat Colorado State, and you just be that smaller school that upsets them. And they try to flip the script. And you know what? You know, he didn't get his hand check at the end. And I think he deserves it, to be quite honest with you. You know, he's playing like shit. He, uh, I'm sorry, that's it's rude, but he is. You know, I just looked at his stats. He's not playing good. He has one touchdown, four interceptions or three interceptions. This coach was hyping him up all at the beginning of the season, talking about how he could have made half a million dollars if he left, but he stayed at Colorado State. I don't believe it. I don't know who the hell is paying that kid half a million to play at their school because I don't believe it. I mean, he's he's he played a good last year ish. And now, I mean, I, I just don't think he's that good. I don't think he's that good. And then he started talking shit and she's not a good look, man. Not a good look at all. Yeah. Not only did he start talking shit, but at a certain point in time, uh, buddy, after that game, you have to realize, let me not go embarrass myself because at any and i know like here's the thing they were just trying to let bygones be bygones but i feel at a certain point in time in beefing with somebody bro you just don't say goodbye i mean as a as a matter of fact like when you look at uh colorado last week and all the shit that he was talking about dylan Rayola, uh you know shadur gets everybody to back him up and say that he had a fucking concussion and he had to go in the locker room two minutes before the game ended you know, hide your embarrassment yeah. uh, through fake injuries and don't put yourself in that situation. Because the of thing course is he's he, not going to shake your hand. No way. No way. And you know that Shador has five different cameras following him. One of them is that's going to definitely be posted on YouTube. Everything that's said. And yeah, bro, you just got clowned. You just got clowned in front of half a million people. How do you feel? Did you did you see him do the the too small to Travis Hunter, too? No, he, I did not. So, Junior, they were down by like twenty in the fourth oh, quarter. No. Yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah. He he like hits him out of bounds, and like I guess you know it I, it it was momentum. Um, I'm forgetting the play now as I'm talking about it, but it was Travis Hunter that pushed him out of bounds, and he gave Travis Hunter the year too small. Um, one of your favorites. Uh, yeah, I do like that move. I do I, like yeah, that. It's good. It's good when it, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. when you're losing by 20 and you do it to Travis fucking Hunter. That's crazy. Yeah, dude. And I think Travis Hunter already picked him off that game. No, 
I could be wrong, dude. But Travis Hunt, lock Travis Hunter in for an interception and a touchdown <laughs> every game <laughs> every the rest game. of the year. <laughs> every game. Yeah, it was that's no, no dude, question. I, I I don't get that, dude. He was he just tried to be the villain, and it's like that's just not you, man. That's just not you. You you just picked the wrong role for the wrong week, man. Um, Junior, there was another big moment that came from this game. Uh, Shadur brings his offensive line oh. to the press conference a week after everybody was saying uh, that Shadur threw them under the bus, which I think he did. But like, I mean, I've I've seen it be worse. I think he was being right. accurate. He's like, bro, I got sacked six times. It doesn't yeah. take you to be a fucking genius to realize something's happening here. Right. Um, so he brings his offensive line and he makes, I don't know if it makes them is the right way to phrase this or if they ch- elected to, but they were standing behind bro at a press conference. No, they don't need chairs. They don't need chairs. The ca- bro, this is the part that kills me. The cameras here. It's it's Shadur Sanders' head and every offensive lineman's <laughs> cock. It's just <laughs> it's so bad, bro. Yeah. Would you, I don't, how would you feel about this? To be honest with you, I'm saying thank you, but no thanks. I'm not going in there. I just finished off a game. Yeah, like I guess we protected well this game. We played a Mount West school, like that's what we're supposed to do. And now we have to go stand behind you after you'd ripped us a week prior to try to make a point for yourself. Like, I'm good, bro. Like, we're going to stick to our job. I do not want to be standing anymore after a game. No, they don't need chairs. They don't need chairs. Let alone hear you and Travis talk about whatever it may be. Like, that's the last thing I'm doing. And it's like everybody's talking about, like, leadership. Like, oh, my God. Like, that's tremendous leadership. Like, screw that shit. Screw that shit. I am not with it. I am not with it at all. Yeah, yeah. A, 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 tremendous leadership. Tremendous Just, leadership. You know what tremendous leadership is? It's immediately taking the blame for everything. No matter if your offensive line gave up 14 sacks, you say, it was my fault. We could have. I could have been way better in my preparation uh, to win that game. He answers that question that way. Those offensive linemen aren't standing behind him the next week. No, you know, no it's, need. But you're just making it, making it a fucking show. Like maybe he did. He did need to make a point ish. But you can make it. You're rich as fuck. Doors. Give them Rolexes. You're making yeah. them stand after a football game. You want to treat wanna, your offensive line? Give them something nice. I want to see that. He's, he makes that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? And I get like some of these college quarterbacks can't do that. He makes that kind of money. He has those type of connections where he could be like, hey, give my man a Rolex. Give my left yeah. tackle a Rolex. Come on. Uh AP hey, on my wrist is perfect time. <laughs> <I> mean, uh, <laughs> it's it's a great song. And the fact catchy. that Nebraska trolled them afterwards with oh, that. Oh, that's hilarious. That's Did hilarious. you see Coach 30's clip on on that game? No, I didn't. Oh my Actually, god! No, I think I might have. I don't. I might have. I love oh. his videos. I probably did. Oh I can't my god! Though. I'm gonna insert it into this video here because it's just so, <laughs> so good, bro. He's hilarious. Right? Hey, and they deserve to do that. Right now, I know how your AP feels, son. Cause on Saturday, we were the ones that got bust down. All right, first quarter, third and ten. All right, quarterback drops back. Don't even get two seconds. D-line already in his lap like a broke stripper. All right? And that's my fault. All right? We're going to address the elephant in the room. All y'all Democratic linemen are ass. All right? If your linemen vote blue, your quarterback going to see red. I know that now. All right? We need to get some Republican linemen in here. Guys that come to the games with bare arms and they form a wall. All right? We got to make the line great again. All right? It's first and ten. Right? We're down seven. Take a look at my son Peters, that quarterback. Oh my God, we're playing Nebraska. I'm scared. If I throw this ball outside, I gotta throw it early with anticipation. Instead, I'm later than a pregnant woman and I throw him a pick like his hair was nappy. I still got that AP on my wrist. Just wish I had better timing on that throw. Pick six, touchdown. All right, it's 21 to zero. All right, we try to kick a field goal, but we got a kicker 
with no accuracy like Daniel Jones or range like Trump. All right, well, everybody watch Hector. Oh, Dios mío, el estadio tiembla como moléculas de agua en un microondas. Esto va a ser más duro que los nachos viejos. Mi orino en mi pierna y bloquearon el go como Twitter in Brazil. Turnover on downs. All right, it's 21-0, right? We need to stop. Everybody watch Jacobs. Oh, my God. He threw the ball right at me. I'm finally going to be able to make a play. It's my first time. This is great. But the moment's way too big. I piss down my leg, tip the ball to the receiver, and roll like a backwood. Why did I come to Colorado? Why did I decide to play football with my life? I regret everything. Touchdown. All right, guys, we're going to have to figure something out. Because that was unacceptable. All right, now Shiloh's out. So Davis, we're going to need you to step up. All right, your mama's had plenty of trains ran on her. You should understand the next man up mentality. All right, now we got Colorado State coming up. You know who that coach is. You know I don't like that nigga. Um, he never misses. He never misses. Okay, so we we covered everything from the first little bro type situation. The last thing that we're going to talk about today is uh, Caleb Williams on Sunday Night Football versus C.J. Stroud of the Houston Texans. The Texans end up winning, I believe it was 19 to 10. Uh, it was a super ugly football game. Like it was uh, a lot of turnovers back and forth. Caleb Williams didn't necessarily <laughs> look the greatest. Um, but with that being said... After the game, C.J. Stroud uh, pulls him in and says, listen to me, stop taking those hits, uh, you know, protect yourself. And Caleb Williams doesn't say anything and is kind of just like, mm, okay, yeah, 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 all right, okay. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> so, uh, Junior, everyone's saying this was a little bro situation. Some people are fighting back against it, and I'm like, this is – this is a bigger little bro situation than what Shadur did. Yeah, yeah, dude. It, it was pretty bad. Because the thing was, it was like he had said something. It seemed like the conversation was over. And then Caleb's walking away. And then CJ just like, come here. Good job out there, bro. Yeah, yeah. Hey, keep going. Stop taking those hits. Yeah, I know. Right? Right? Hey, yeah. learn from, learn, look, come here. Learn from those mistakes. And everything that you got, bro, is in you already, bro. You're going to be a hell of a player in this league. Yeah. All right, boy. Appreciate it. For sure. Come here, little bro. <laughs> and you could just see, like, Caleb's face. He was just not having it, dude. Not No eye contact. There was just no love there, dude. And I think this is this is great, though. This is going to create up for a storyline three years from now. That clip's going to be played again, and it's going to be like, remember when C.J. Strout, little boy, Caleb Williams— Who's the little bro now? You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yep. I think yep. this is because he definitely little bro him. There's no doubt about it. There's no yeah. doubt about it. CJ comes out and says that he didn't. He didn't mean to. You know, me and Caleb, I don't. I, I was not trying to like treat him like I was trying to like little bro him or nothing. He knows that too. I have a ton of respect for him. I told him I have respect for him. Um, but I had so much, so many guys coming to me after games last year, and that meant the world, meant the world to me. Um, that 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 those guys even thought about giving me advice. So I just try to get back to what the game is giving to me. So uh, I, I wish him the best, man. I want him to do amazing in this league. Of hey. course, which is and bro, he's double downing on the little broing him. No, I no, know. I wasn't. I wasn't little broing him, bro. He went. He went. <laughs> I wasn't. I so totally wasn't little broing him, bro. So that's gonna be interesting, dude. Like it, it happened. He got a little bro, and Caleb's looking at that clip like, I should have just got out of there. Yeah. I should have just walked away. And now, now it's just creating for this, this rivalry that's that's going to be awesome to see in these next upcoming years. It is going to be awesome to see. Caleb had so many comebacks to what was done by C.J. Stroud there. One, it's like, I got drafted higher than you. Right. I make I my my contract is more than you. Uh that's pretty much all he could use. But he should have said that. He should have been like, "Hey CJ, uh maybe you should have took my advice and stayed uh or you know, would CJ Stroud a senior? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe know. maybe CJ Stroud came out early. They're both the same age, which makes me think that CJ could have stayed a couple more years. 
Yeah, that's that's just he got a little broed by a dude that's his same age. That's just embarrassing. Yeah. That's embarrassing. And Caleb's supposed to be that dude. Caleb's supposed to be that dude. And he had a little bro. Yeah. He's had a really rough start to his uh, NFL career. N- yeah. Winning, bro, winning your first ga- NFL game. Like, you know, people are always going to be like, oh, Caleb, tell me what your first NFL game was like. We won. That's all he should say. Because yeah, he threw for 92 yeah. yards. And <laughs> he was like... 12 for like 30 or something. It was horrible. Um, it, it was insane. I remember looking at the ESPN app and I'm like, all right, they won. Let's see how Caleb did. 92 yards. <laughs> how the hell did they win the football game? What did they do? But shout uh, out to the defense, man, for, for stepping up. Oh, my God. No. Shout out to Will Levis for single-handedly giving them the, the ball game. Will Levis threw two pick sixes, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. in, that, uh, in that loss. Oh. Disgusting. Um, Junior, I will see you uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. It's crazy. At the hotel, dude. Uh, I look forward to this trip. Um, Yeah, I got calls from beyond every Tuesday. Uh, Make sure you guys go subscribe to them on YouTube. Share it with your spooky friends. Uh, that's the show that I'm going to promote this week. I work on a lot of shows. So follow me at Mr. George Carmona. You can find all the shows that I work on there. Junior, what can they follow you on? Carmona JR, two R's on Twitter and Instagram. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you to all the Arkansas fans for always showing love. And uh, let's just keep this ball rolling, man. There we go. Woo pig, baby. Woo pig. I know the situation.